How's it going guys? My name's Alex. This is Modified 3D. Today, we're gonna finish up the direct drive install on our Ender 3 Pro. What we gotta do today is finish up our wiring, and I'm gonna do that by creating a new custom DIY wiring harness. Now, I had previously done this before by adding these JST XH connectors, which can also be seen right here, in place and these were just soldered in. And that gave me a little bit of modularity when it comes to switching stuff out if parts ever failed. Say if the mister went bad, I could easily swap that out. Same with a fan. Now I did leave the heater cartridge uh, previously uh, as one full wire. That's gonna change this time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add these two micro Molex connectors. Now these are 10 pin micro Molex connectors. And what that'll let me do is have individual connections for our positive and negative for five different basically accessories. So we have our parts fan, our hot end fan, or you know the, the layer fan. Then we have our thermistor, that's three. And our heater cartridge would be the fourth. And that gives us one open slot to add a second layer fan or parts fan in the future if we want to run dual 5015 fans. All we'd have to do is just insert the pins and we'll be good to go. Now, what I'm also gonna do is run new wire and we're gonna run it in front of the gantry because that's what printermods.com says you have to do for the MDD plate install. We're gonna run down Basically follow our easy ABL Pro wires to the back and then straight into the uh, control case. From there, we'll have micro Molex connectors that we'll use to go into the board. And a couple of them are just gonna be bare wire where a screw terminal clamps down on it. So with that being said, let's take a look at exactly everything we're gonna need to do this custom harness install. Exactly everything we're gonna need is gonna be our micro Molex connectors, and that's gonna be for the hot end side. And I chose to go with a 10 pin option, like I said, to give me that option to have the second layer fan in the future if I want. A eight pin would work. We have our JST XH connectors for plugging into the main board. I've got some silicone uh, wire, and this is 22 gauge. I've got a variety of different colors so that I don't mix up what is what when I'm installing it. Of course, we're gonna need some zip ties to make everything look good. And I got some wire sheeting. I'll have links to all this stuff in the description so you can grab it as well. Forgot to mention, you're also gonna need one of these special uh, crimpers. And what this will do is allow us to crimp the pins down and secure our pins to the wire. And before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that way you can get the most up-to-date content on modifying your 3D printer. So with that being said, let's finally get to this install. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna want our hot end at the very top and farthest away point from where our wiring is going. This is to give us the maximum distance of travel so that if we ever do encounter a print this large, which I never do print tall prints like this, then we won't be snagging our wires and we make sure that we have enough room. Now, with my uh, direct drive gantry, this is about as far as I can bring mine up. So you, as you can see, I have lost a good amount, oh, I don't know, maybe 50 millimeters of Z height. Like I said, that is not a big deal for me. I never print above maybe 100, 120 millimeters tall, and that's really pushing it. Almost all my stuff's flat. But once we have this in our very further or furthest distance away from where our board's originating from or the board, we can go ahead and start disassembling this essentially. What I'm gonna do first is because the 50 watt heater cartridge from TH3D was wired directly into the main board, I'm gonna take some flush cut pliers and I'm gonna snip off a length of this just to get it out of the way and get that done. And it's always good to clip more than you need. 
We'll put that with our parts. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and clip our zip ties. Now I am going to be keeping the wire for the Easy ABL sensor separate from the loom, uh, or rather not inside this red wiring, uh, because that would require me to cut it, which avoids the warranty. Now we are still going to be using our cable chains on the back because we do still have our wire going to our X stepper motor. But for the most part, this is going to be an empty chain. I am going to have to find a solution for mounting the top of the chain because as you can see right now, it's just free floating. Um, I think I'm going to utilize the hole where the old stepper motor was. Um, in that mounting bracket. All right, so now we got that all freed up. We can just pull the old wiring harness out and we'll move the old stuff to the side and just out of the way. We're gonna be keeping that and we're just gonna tuck this up here. Tuck that there, just hide this nice and forget about it for now. And I am going to have to move my Easy ABL Pro Sensor. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to bring it around to the front and back in. That way we don't have any snagging issues and we can run this with the actual harness that we're going to be making. So the next step we're just going to start pinning our micro molex connector and that's done by using these male and female pins right here. And there's a special way to crimp these on. There's plenty of videos online on YouTube of how to crimp micro fit connectors from molex. But essentially you put it in the jaw, right in the middle. Uh, that's gonna be for the size that we're using. And you want it so that the back is flush with the tool. You crimp it down and do a little tug test on it. Make sure it's good. Once it's good, you move on to the next one, insert the pin into the connector, and you're good to go. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna kind of find the collection point for all of these wires and where they're gonna end up because we want them all the same length for when we install the pins. Now that we got all of our wires cut to the same size and our heater cartridge installed, we can go ahead and start installing the pins for these. I'm gonna go ahead and install the male side for these. All right, so we got our pins installed on here and they're all nicely crimped in place. The next thing we're gonna do is insert the pins into our Molex connector. And a good idea is to take like a sticky note or something and write down the location of what's going where in the pin and that way you just don't forget when it comes to do the other side and you gotta match up your pins. So I'm not the best artist, but as you can see, I marked number one and two are gonna be my heater. And there's not really a positive and negative on the heater or the thermistor since it's just kind of like a circuit or an open circuit. But anyways, we got the heater on one and two, the thermistor on three and four. We got our 40 millimeter fan positive on five. Six is gonna be our 40 millimeter fan negative. Seven and eight are our 50, 15 fan. We got the positive on seven, negative on eight. And this is the view of the back of the connector. You see we got, just kind of modeled it. You know, you got the little clip at the top. Um, and obviously there is nine and 10, but since we aren't doing the dual 50, 15 fans, this side of the hot end won't have any nine and 10. 
On the other side of the harness, this one going to the board, we will have nine and 10. Technically, actually, um, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are all gonna be connected. Seven is gonna go to nine because they're gonna share a positive. We're essentially creating a splitter and we're gonna have eight share with 10. So I'm gonna basically create a little Y split with the wire, solder it, and then that's how I'm gonna get my jumper wire to go into the secondary position for our second layer fan. But now that we got this side done, let's go ahead and what we can do is measure our wire. I'm gonna have to bring back the hot end to the top corner. I just lowered it because it was easier to strip the wire sitting down. So I'll bring that up and I will pull out enough wire to run over, down, and then we're gonna go back a little bit to kind of clear this hump of the rail, down, and then back, and we'll have enough to go kind of up to the front and some slack. It's always good to have some slack. We can cut some away when we go to pin out the micro molex connectors on the bottom. And real quick, I forgot to show you guys. This is what it looks like with all your pins in there. And of course, like I said earlier, we're missing pin nine and 10 because this side doesn't have our second fan. So let's get on with the rest of the install. All right, so this is what we got here. Our other side of the connector. We have two different harnesses and one harness, like I said before, is gonna be our fan harness. The other harness is for our hot end. Uh, power wires. I went ahead and ran those all the way down and they're just a nice little loom. I went ahead and cleaned up our work area a little bit and basically what we have left is we have our runout sensor which I've determined I'm gonna mount basically right up here. I'm gonna have uh, more fittings coming out the side and I'm just gonna have it mount over here instead of on top and moving just because I was worried about uh, slack. We have our extruder motor uh, cable, which we need to get our extension that's included with the printer mods MDD plate and the extension will plug into here and give us the extra little bit of length that we need to power the stepper motor on the extruder. And then we just need to wire these into the board. All right, so basically I've removed the old harness, got that off, and I nice and neatly routed the new wiring up and in. It's just temporarily zip tied in place to keep it nice and accessible. I also went and found my extension harness for the extruder motor, got that plugged in. What we're gonna do now is we gotta shorten up these wires a little bit because they're just a tad bit long, which, uh, probably about three, four inches long, which is perfect. Uh, that's what I wanted. I'd rather have it too long than too short. We'll go ahead and add the couple connectors that need JST connectors. We will go ahead and pin those out so that we can put them in. That's gonna be the thermistor, the fan, and I believe that's it because the hot end, the hot end fan, those two get um, wired in with screw terminals. And looking at the old harness, we got thermistor, we got fan, this is a fan, and this is hot end heater cartridge. So that's all we have to worry about. All right, so we got everything hooked up in here. We got the hot end and our hot end fan installed, our more, or sorry, our JST connector for the other fan and our JST connector for the thermistor. All of our wiring is nicely tucked in. The only thing left to do is put our bottom panel back on and we will move back to kind of cleaning wiring up and we still have to hook up our extruder power wire. Then we can power this on and make sure all of our connections are good and solid. All right, so we got everything buttoned up. The wiring is looking good. Everything's super clean. 
Um, the last thing to do is turn it on and hopefully all of those connections are solid, but we will give it a test and wish me luck. So, so far, so good, we don't have smoke. Now we are gonna have to reflash the firmware because we are using uh, direct drive, so we're gonna wanna change. I know on the easy firmware uh, through TH3D that um, by selecting direct drive, it changes the unload length for the filament sensor, and there's also an option for the pancake stepper. Now right off the bat, I see we have an issue with our thermistor. It is reading 172 degrees, which is incorrect. So that means we got a bad wire somewhere um, on the thermistor side. And we're gonna wanna fix that before moving on to anything else. Let's see if that makes it easier for you guys. All right, and just like that, we got it fixed. So it turns out that I had pinned one of these connectors 180 degrees in the wrong way, which is why only my 40 millimeter fan was working because it shares a center pin. The two on the outside and the two on this outside were flopped. So now, um, when I powered on, I had an actual power to this fan. So what we can do now, just to double test everything, is go down to temperature, preheat PLA, Preheat PLA end, make sure she heats up. And as you can see, it is. We can also go to motion and move access, move X, move X axis, 10 millimeters. Make sure that our wires don't get snagged at all anywhere while this is moving. And the last thing to do is once the extruder gets up to temp is to just double check that the extruder motor is actually working. So let's check and see what our temp is at right now. Almost there. That yeah, should be good enough. Motion, move axis, extruder. We'll just move it one millimeter. And I do hear it run. I can feel it as well. So that's a good sign. I guess what we'll do is move on to part three of the install where we go over how to tune for and how to flash the firmware for the direct drive and then finally actually printing with direct drive so thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to give a thumbs up if you have any questions feel free to put them down in the comments i'll make sure to get right to them and if you want to see more 3d printing modifying material or material on modifying your 3d printer man that came out bad make sure to hit that subscribe button all right guys this is Alex. Y'all have a good one.